Hello and welcome to World Watch on Awileke TV. I am Anthonia Mwokolo. Chad is set to become the first of Africans' current junta-led states to move to democratic rule with Monday's presidential vote. It will end a three-year transition imposed after the sudden death of a long-serving leader, Idris Deby, while fighting rebels. But as his son and successor, General Mohamed Deby, is one of the favorites to win, there is some skepticism about whether this will bring about change. Prime Minister Sussex Masra is among his nine challengers and is seen as his biggest rival. The start of voting was marked by delays with polls opening an hour behind schedule in some areas. President Derby kicked off the exercise by casting his ballot in the capital. He said he was proud to have fulfilled his promise to respect the deadline for elections that will signal a return to constitutional order. Ten other politicians who had been hoping to run, including two prominent figures, Nassau Ibrahim, Negai Kosame, and Rakis Hamad Saleh, were excluded by the Constitutional Council because of irregularities. But some have argued that the decision to bar certain people was politically motivated. Nevertheless, Chad's election is a milestone for countries in West and Central Africa that have fallen under military rule since a spate of coup began in 2020. In other news, Republican presidential candidate Donald Trump accused Democratic rival President Joe Biden of running a Gestapo administration in a private address to donors in which he also attacked prosecutors involved in his criminal indictment. According to a recording heard by media outlets, Trump, whose own rhetoric has drawn accusations of fascist tendencies from civil rights groups and other critics, made a comparison with the Nazi police in Germany's World War II regime at a donor retreat Saturday night at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Palm Beach, Florida. The comments came after Trump reprised his complaint that the multiple indictments against him were politically motivated. He had just concluded 11 days of a New York hush money trial in which he is charged with falsifying business records to cover up a $130,000 payment made to a porn star. In a statement, White House spokesman Andrew Bates sought to contrast Biden's conduct in office with Trump's latest remark, accusing the former president of echoing fascist rhetoric, launching with new Nazis and fanning debunked conspiracy theories that have cost brave police officers their lives. Now, Israel has ordered the local offices of Qatar's Al Jazeera satellite news network to close on Sunday, escalating a long-running feud between the broadcaster and Prime Minister Benjamin hardline government as Doha mediated ceasefire negotiations with Hamas hung in the balance. The extraordinary order, which includes confiscating broadcast equipment, preventing the broadcast of the channel's reports and blocking its website, is believed to be the first time Israel has ever shot at a foreign news outlet. The network has reported the Israeli Hamas war non-stop since the militant's initial cross-border attack October 7 and has maintained 24-hour coverage in the Gaza Strip amid Israel's grinding ground offensive that has killed and wounded members of its own staff. While including on-the-ground reporting of the war's casualties, its Arabic arm often publishes verbatim video statements from Hamas and other militant groups in the region. In a statement, Netanyahu said Al Jazeera reporters harmed Israel's security and incited against soldiers and it's time to remove the Hamas mouthpiece from the country. Now, large bipartisan groups of House lawmakers requested last week that the House Appropriations Committee substantially increase funding in 2025 for the Non-Profit Security Grant Program. The State Department's Office for the Special Envoy to Monitor and Combat Antisemitism and the Holocaust Survival Assistance Program. The requests submitted in letters to committee leaders come at a time of heightened anti-Semitism both domestically and globally and face a restrictive budget environment. It is not clear that 2025 government funding will be finalized before the November election and a potential additional complication given that Congress was delayed roughly six months in passing 2024 funding bills. The NSGP, which provides funding to non-profits and religious institutions to enhance security, suffered a fund cutting from $305 million to $274.5 million in the 2024 appropriation bill, but was supplemented with an additional $400 million through the foreign and supplemental package. A group of 120 House members requested that funding be boosted to $385 million in 2025, surpassing the $360 million request level lawmakers had maintained for years prior to October 7th.
And that's all we have for you on World Watch. I am Antonia Mwokulu. Follow us on our social media handles at Ubeleke TV. Visit our website at www.ubeleke.tv for a thrilling journey. Ubeleke TV, rising star at the fairground.